The core of Sunrise Ranch is that integrity, the integrity of people who are living a committed life. The people in the original community at Sunrise Ranch moved here because they wanted to establish a teaching and learning center. And they wanted to create a place where people could transform, they could learn, they could heal. But there was a promise of something that they felt together in initiating a community that would basically prove out what human beings really can be. There was a man named Lloyd Arthur Meeker who wrote and spoke under the pen name of Yoranda. And in 1932, he had an awakening of sorts. He was looking for a spiritual leader and couldn't find one. He was traveling everywhere trying to find someone to be his spiritual leader. And he had this awakening in 1932, September of 1932. What he discovered was that the teacher he was looking for was inside himself. And he began to understand that that's true of all people. That's true of humanity as a whole. That the answer we're looking for, that we're often looking for outside ourselves, is actually within, looking to be released into expression. Lloyd Arthur Meeker was a healer, and he was also a teacher, a teacher of spiritual things particularly, but also nutrition and health. And for 13 years, he would set up a teaching facility. But what he found was that the real significant changes that are necessary in people's lives weren't happening. There was inspiration, there was some learning, but not the kind of change that he knew was possible. So he began to think that if he had a permanent residential facility, that he could set up a context where people could really change, really grow, really emerge in the fullness of who they are. So in 1932, he was traveling all over the United States teaching, and he had an office here in Loveland. And back then, dry, riding around on horseback, his sister-in-law, Rosie, came over the ridge and noticed that this property was for sale. This needs to be the home of the ministry. And she rode back and brought him and others over. And as soon as he came into this valley, into this property, he knew this is where it needs to be. This needs to be the home of emissaries of divine light. She brought him over here and they decided to purchase it. And here it was, 123 acres available for $6,000, which at that time was a lot of money for them. And he brought a community, a small community of people, I think it was only like nine people that moved here. When they originally came to the ranch, there were two buildings, a barn and a farmhouse. And other than that, there were no buildings here and down in the valley, virtually no trees. And there was no water except for a well. This was a dry land farm. It had been farmed out. This was shortly after, in terms of years, the Dust Bowl time. Lloyd Arthur Meeker was very much into honoring the earth and supporting the earth so that it could thrive. And so he wanted to bring back nutrition into the soil and he did a lot of work to make sure that happened. He never used pesticides, never used herbicides, decided to allow the nature of the place to come back. The story of the ranch is a story of people with very little in terms of physical wealth or money. They depended on donations that came in. There were meager donations, but with all kinds of spiritual resource, all kinds of inspiration and desire. What happens when a person has that is that the universe cooperates and just brings resources to make happen what's in their hearts and what's potential that they're feeling and taking that step that they're taking. And that's what happened at Sunrise Ranch. In 1940, Lloyd Arthur Meeker gave a talk in Vancouver that was set up by a man, Martin Cecil. Now, Martin Cecil was from the Cecil family in England. And so he was an English Lord, like literally an English Lord from the House of Lords eventually. And they became fast friends and colleagues and co-teachers. Martin Cecil as a man was um, a representation to me of integrity, consistency, invitation. These were two amazing men, really by any standard. 
They just were men of, of great stature. They were the, the founding leaders of emissaries of divine light. And th they had tremendous conviction, tremendous faith, tremendous knowing, and a great ability to convey the message that they knew so intrinsically for themselves and to, to share it with other people. And that's when buildings started being built. And then the gravity of attraction started happening and more people, chiropractors came and built, started building the accommodations building. Lord Arthur Meeker had practiced vibrational medicine for many years. He actually gave his first vibrational medicine treatment in, in 1929. He was practicing here at the ranch and came in contact with a group of chiropractors who became interested in vibrational medicine. And so they were developing something amongst themselves. They called themselves the GPC Chiropractic Association. And then they ran across Lloyd Arthur Meeker, who had this in-depth knowledge of how to offer energy medicine to another person. And they were fascinated and they began to follow his teachings. And he set up courses for six months, for three years, and the first year was 1952. And there were these just amazing teachings of what it means to bring energy medicine to another person. Lloyd Arthur Meeker didn't stop touring the country when he established Sunrise Ranch. And he bought a plane so he could get around easier. It was a small plane. And in 1954, unfortunately, he had a plane crash into San Francisco Bay. And he died along with his wife and others who were on board with him. When Yoranda passed away, it was a shock to the ministry. When he passed away, there was a lot of upheaval. The early years after Lloyd Arthur Meeker's passing were difficult. As things went along, they strengthened and Martin gave classes of his own and there was a gathering group of leaders that came in around him and things began to expand. It thrived. There was about 200 people living on property. They were attending services and classes and then contributing their love and work and service to the community. There are other communities that were created, eventually conferences that were held, public symposiums. Martin traveled the country and eventually the world. And there were people who were sprung up out of the culture as it was in the 60s and 70s that were drawn to Emissaries of Divine Light and, and to Sunrise Ranch. Sunrise was a beacon for many of us to touch into something that felt very new age and yet very old at the same time. In 1988, Martin Cecil passed on. He actually got spinal meningitis and was hospitalized and eventually passed away. When Martin passed, there's another shock to the ministry. It was a difficult time. There was a group of people who had been leading with him that attempted to carry on, but it soon became apparent that it wasn't theirs to do. And when the leader passes away, if you're not actually doing what you've been taught to do, if you're not living the truth of who you are, you get lost because you're waiting for someone to tell you what to do. And so that leadership grouping came apart. As it came apart, there was a great loss of general leadership around the world for the emissaries, a loss of membership. People start leaving saying, I don't, this isn't important anymore. Leadership was in question. People steered away from the principle of focus, focalization, trying to do their own things. And a few of us got together to look at how we could weave together the truths that we had come to know through the emissaries, but do in a way that was current for us and current for the world. And that's what happened through the 90s and into the 2000s. A group of people got together and nominated David Karcher to be our spiritual director. 
Emissaries of Divine Light was founded in America in the middle of the Depression. It was founded at a time where their prevailing spirituality was Christian religion. So it was grown in that context. In the 2000s, that context had changed dramatically. It wasn't exclusively a country or a culture of Christian religion here in the United States or around the world. We had to find a different reference point for what is eternally true spiritually. Part of what needed to happen was we re needed to reclaim our services. So it was the bringing of a spiritual message and allowing them to be focused by people who knew what that meant. It became so important for us who began to lead Sunrise Ranch to discover our own ownership of what we knew and also to be with what was evolving in the culture overall so that spirituality wouldn't be just a teaching, but it would be a knowing. And that the human heart was cracked open to that knowing because actually there's no spiritual integrity without an emotional cracking open, without some emotional integrity and authenticity. So those were core components of what we had to learn to carry forward what's happening on Sunrise Ranch and what's happening for emissaries around the world.